Sam thinks they're tuning to Sam's workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. This is going to be a tough one because I have a lot to say about this book and I really don't want to go rambling. Um, <laughs> I've already like recorded this thing twice and just been like, nope, delete, delete, delete. So, third time's a charm, right? Um, <laughs> we're going to be discussing She is a Haunting today. There's a lot to unpack with this book. You're following Jade and she's going to Vietnam to spend time with her father. Basically, he's bribing her. He's like, if you come spend time with me in Vietnam, I'll give you the money that you need for college. He abandoned his family when he was young, when they were young. Everyone seems to forget that except for Jade. She was, I think, 11. She was between 11 and 13, I believe. And everyone seems to forget that except for her. He abandoned them. He left them to go to Vietnam. And you can somewhat sympathize because she does the same. She has the same struggle. She's too American to be Vietnamese and she's too Vietnamese to be American. There is that struggle with identity that really drives the story forward. There's a lot that's going on with the story. When she's in Vietnam at this house that her father is fixing up. It's a French, um, it's an old French house, you know, during the French, um, I guess, occupation, I'll call it. It's being haunted by two ghosts. One is the French woman who's super racist. And then you have the Vietnamese bride who kind of wants to protect Jade. So while Dre, well, not while Dre, while Jade is struggling, you know, she's seeing these ghosts and she's finding out more of a history of the people who lived in this house, including her grandmother, who was a servant in this house. So she doesn't really understand why her father wants to fix this house so much. Her, her grandmother was a servant to a racist French woman who called her savages, who called the Vietnamese people savages. I can kind of understand he wants to take more ownership and reclaim the dignity that maybe his grandmother lost as a child, but he's still fixing it up in a very French way for tourists to come and, and so that they can spend time in this haunted bed and breakfast. The story is really about identity and finding your place in the world because Jade struggles a lot. She struggles a lot, not just with being too Vietnamese or being too American, which, you know, I can kind of connect to that as well. She knows some Vietnamese and I'm, I like to call myself a mad Mexican. I don't really know a lot of Spanish. I'm trying to fix that. I'm trying to learn more Spanish now so that my kids can know Spanish. Um, unfortunately, you know, my mother didn't really practice it a lot with me growing up at all. Most of my language learning came from watching telenovelas with my mom. <laughs> that was about it. Uh, I'm really good at understanding, but when it comes to actually speaking it, I can't really speak it. And Jade is kind of the same way. She can understand bits and pieces, but she can't really speak it. So I was able to connect to her at an, an emotional level. She's not just struggling with that. She's also struggling with her sexuality. She's bisexual, but she prefers women overall. And she really thinks that if her mother finds out, her mother's going to have the same reaction as her father and just in a way disown her. Because her father, when he found out when she was young, slapped her across the face. Like, is that not traumatic? It's traumatizing. So now she has this deep-seated fear that her mother will also, in a way, disown her. So she struggles a lot with her sexuality and she struggles a lot with her identity and how is she supposed, does she, does she identify as Vietnamese or does she identify as American? Like, no, you can accept both into your culture and still be true to who you are. And I think a lot of people nowadays can really connect to that because you're either one or the other for a lot of people. It's like, no, you're both and you can embrace both and you can be both. I'm part um, Mexican. I'm also part Spaniard, Native American. I'm a bunch of things. And I tell people what I am. All of them. I own all of them. Proudly. Oh, and part 
Puerto Rican. So, Puerto Rican, Mexican, Native American, Spaniard, and Lebanese. That's it. That's all. That's everything I am. <laughs> um, and I take ownership of it. And I think that's a lot of what a lot of people don't do. They don't feel like they can take ownership of everything that they are. And Jade struggles with that a lot. So you can really connect to it. I like that we're also delving into this discussion on colonialization through this horror landscape. Because you're really just getting invested in this story. You're getting invested in the haunting and that really gothic atmosphere. It really is engaging to you as a reader. There's a lot I want to say about this book. It's just really hard to form into words, you know. It was really well written. I love the characterization. I like how I was personally able to connect to it on a really relatable emotional level. I do think connecting to Jade herself as a character was a bit of a struggle for me. Um, her attitude was a little bit of a deterrent for me, but overall I do think she was very well done, you know, emotionally. I like the haunting aspect. I like how it just keeps getting creepier and creepier and creepier as this story goes on. And again, it really was an engaging story. It really was captivating. I do think this discussion on colonialization and the ramifications that do come from it, because there are a lot of ramifications from it. You know, the bride in this story, you feel for her, her, her ghost. You, you really, really feel for her, the, especially the more you know, the more you learn about the French woman who lived in this house and how she tormented her and how the bride really tried so hard to be a part of this household, but was still viewed as an outsider. And then because she joined this household to protect her people, she became an outsider for her people. She was a woman without a home, just as Jade is a girl who feels like she doesn't have a home or a culture. So... All I can say is I think everyone should at least give it a shot and read it. it. There's just, there's so much I want to say about this book. Writing was really well done. Atmosphere was so gothic and wonderful and I loved it. It was creepy in all the best ways. It was haunting in a lot of the best ways. I really need to stop reading books where the characters suffer from sleep paralysis because that just terrifies me. But, I mean, it was a good book. So all in all, I have to give it four out of five stars. Um, I really do think you should give it a shot and read it. <laughs> um, if you do, I, want, I will include links in the description below on where you can purchase it. And on that note, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day as always. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with all your Brooklyn friends. And, you know, happy reading, guys.